and welcome back to Dazatron's Diorama Llama. It's good to be back with another video tutorial and in this make I want to show you how to create kind of a fallen tree wood um, diorama scene for yeah you know, whichever characters you fancy really. Um, I recently picked up the APC is it Night Rory or something like that? Um, their version of Black Arachnia. Um, and I thought this would work particularly well for that figure. But of course, it could work with many, many other figures that you might have in your collection. So to begin, um, here's a bit of a preview. Here's one I made earlier, if you like. Um, this is just kind of a, a tree stump. And what I really want to show you in this video is how to kind of create an easy tree texture. Um, and here's just another version with just an off cut, but you can see that the texture is quite effective and really easy to do. So that's the great thing about this. You don't require any, well, hardly any skill really to create this. So as you know, I like to have a desk bot in my videos. So this one is new ages version of shockwave. One of my favourite Decepticons, and this is the comic book version. So really, really like this fantastic kind of paintwork, an amazing transformation. If you haven't seen this figure before, really, really clever, um, and I would highly recommend this to anyone who collects Transformers. Obviously, it's a legend scale, so yeah, it's about four inches. It's not a very large figure, but it still packs a punch and has a nice presence. Um, so yeah, highly recommended from me. So let's move on to what we're going to do today, which is to make this kind of diorama, tree diorama. So to create the, um, the effect, if you like, of the bark, you will need one of these electric foam cutters. Now, you've seen me use this many times and I've recommended it quite often on this channel because you can pick one of these up for between 20 and 25 pounds from Amazon and other you know, sellers um, online. What you do find with the electric foam cutter, it comes with the wire cutter, which is what you saw a moment ago. And then this tool here is kind of the rod tool and there's two versions of this in the set that I own. So there's a longer version and a shorter version, which you can see here. Um, and that's what we will use to kind of create the texture a bit later on. So you will need a decent sized piece of foam. So this is a four inch or just, it's about just under four inches, probably three and three quarters um, in thickness. In terms of, you know, the length of the rip, really, it's up to you. It depends how large you want your tree trunk to be so you can see already i've made some stumps but also want to make a a larger kind of log um to create a bit more of a an interesting display so just to show you how to make a tree stump you simply need to use your wire cutter to pull away the corners so we're just going to kind of round off the edges if you like and notice i'm pulling the cutter out so it kind of tapers out at the end and that is to kind of create the root effect a little bit later on. So we don't want a, a straight cut. We, you do want to kind of pull it out as it gets to the bottom. So um, just a tip really, if you are using um, a wire cutter, particularly when you get to the texture effect, it does create a lot of smoke and a lot of fumes. So it is worthwhile wearing a face mask when you're doing that. Um, possibly goggles as well um, if you have sensitive eyes because the smoke does get into your face. So a well-ventilated area is always a good, a good idea. So all I'm doing at the moment is I'm just trying to round off this kind of tree stump. Just get rid of any of those kind of corners. Now you don't need to um, make this too smooth and um, because when you start to add the texture that will kind of smooth out any of these kind of rough areas anyway so as long as you've got a, a reasonable shape to it and you're quite happy with that um, yeah 
don't think you've got to sand it down all kind of really smoothing out. So the wire cutter is doing most of the work here. I'm just trying to kind of straighten the edge a little bit more. So it's a bit more uniform. And just trying to shape those roots at the bottom a little bit as well. So you can see there, look, I've added some kind of indents in between the roots just to kind of create um, a more interesting shape or organic shape, I guess. So that's looking about right. Yeah, um, just comparing that to the one I made earlier, it is quite a tall stump, really. It's probably a bit too tall. So I'm just going to cut off a good inch or so. And the great thing about that is I've got a smaller stump then that I can use later. So it's very easy to create more than one um, quite quickly. And you can see that's about the same size now as the one from before. So the next thing to do is to replace the wire tool with the rod tool. Again, this is the smaller of the two rods um, that I have in my set. I think most of the sets that I've seen online do come with more than one tool. So it is worth checking that out before you purchase. So of course, yeah, you need to switch this on. It does heat up pretty quickly, so do be careful. Do obviously move your fingers out of the way, particularly with um, this one here, as it's quite a small item. And what you want to do, you want to move the rod quite quickly. You don't want to keep it um, onto the foam, and I'll show you in a moment what I mean by that, as if you keep it on top of the foam for too long, um, it will just melt right through. So we just kind of putting it forwards and backwards, moving it side to side. So it's just kind of creating those lines and those textures which give it that kind of bark kind of feel to it. So if I show you what I mean here, if I just hold that rod on top of a piece of styrofoam, it just slices through it like butter. And obviously the hotter this gets, um, the easier it is to kind of cause some real damage to your piece of work. So do be careful. If you do dig in a little bit too much, just try and hide the fact by kind of moving the tool backwards and forwards again. And of course, you know, if you look at a tree or photographs of a tree, you'll see that there are bits that kind of a bit more indented. Um, you do get holes in trees as well. So don't be afraid to kind of add that extra bit of detail. And when you come to the root, it's quite hard to kind of just hold the the tool on top so you do can no, I'll say that again you do need to kind of move the tool um, in the direction of the route kind of think nightmare before Christmas you know kind of Tim Burton-esque kind of style trees it's got that kind of feel to it and then just to add a bit more detail I'm just using the tool very very lightly at the top just to kind of add where the rings would be when you kind of um, cut down a tree and of course the edge um, around that kind of ring, that would be the, the thickness of the bark. So I don't need to worry too much about the base there because obviously that won't be seen when it's on your shelf. And it's really up to you how deep you go with those cuts, particularly around the roots. So I'm just using a floristry knife, just to add a little bit of detail. So it makes it look like this tree is kind of be cut down with an axe or a chainsaw, just because a little bit more natural. And again, it's up to you how far you go with that detail. And it is worthwhile looking online at examples of um, trees that have been cut down, just to get an idea of the kind of texture you want to add. So I'm doing the same now to the, the off cut that I showed you earlier. Of course, I've sped this up, but um, you can see actually you do want to move that tool quite quickly. And again, do be very careful of your fingers when you're doing this. But really, in minutes, you can kind of create that kind of bark texture. Um, so it's a really great way to create quite a realistic effect, I guess, for these trees in a short space of time. Now because this is an off cut, um, you do get a bit of a texture, so I just want to smooth that out. So I'm just using this kind of sand block, 
just to smooth that off a little bit. And then rather than using the heat tool again, or the foam cutter, I'm just using the knife um, to kind of etch in that shape. And actually this is, this is an easier way to do this um, because the, the rod tool is so hot. Again, when you are kind of drawing these lines in, it's really easy to kind of go a bit too deep. So using the, um, the floristry knife, you've got a bit more control. Of course, it doesn't have to be a floristry knife. It could be a compass. It could be even a pencil. You'll have seen me use that in the past. So anything really that's going to make an indent. And again, it's up to you how far you go with the detail on this. So yeah, I'm quite happy with that. I think that's looking pretty good. And then it's just a bit of an idea of how it might look once you put it on the shelf. So you feel, it feels like it needs something else. So I do need to kind of make this kind of fallen log. So you will need a longer piece of styrofoam. It's still the same thickness. It's about a just under four inches in terms of thickness. And I've just left a little bit more styrofoam so I can kind of create this kind of branch coming off the log. Again, just to add a bit more interest to it. Um, I think it looks more visually appealing. So it's the same method as before. I'm just kind of round, rounding off the edges. Just using the wire cutter. You do have to go quite slow with the cutter. Because obviously you can see even here it's pulling on that wire. Um, it is quite strong. And I've never had to replace the wire as yet. With all of the videos that I've made. So you can see how long it lasts um, just using the wire that was already there when you kind of buy the kit. Um, so you have to be pretty kind of rough with it to kind of, you know, break that wire. And you can see how easy it is just to kind of cut in details. So I'm just kind of cutting these kind of roots to make it look like it's kind of, you know, fallen out of the ground or, you know, wind has pushed it over or whatever it might be, you know. I'm trying to use the very edge of the wire here just to pick out a few more details. And I'll go back to the rod tool a bit later just to kind of add um, further details later on. Because you see it's, it's quite hard to manipulate the styrofoam with the wire cutter. It's great for cutting out the basic shape, it's not great for details. So I just want to taper out those roots again, like before. So it looks like those roots are kind of sticking out. So I just want to slim down the sides of the log. And the same as before, you don't need to be too smooth with this. It's up to you how much you take away. You can see with the styrofoam, you've got this kind of like, um, it's almost like a glitter effect. You can see where the light's hitting it. So I'm just trying to get rid of some of that. Now, if you really wanted to, you could sand this down first. But again, I like the, um, the roughness of the edge because I think when you start to use the rod tool, um, it creates a variety of marks. So it doesn't look so neat and tidy, um, which it wouldn't be, would it really? So I would say this is a good um, make for beginners, although it looks quite difficult. Because it's such a rough cut, um, you don't have to be really neat and tidy with this. Um, and because the rod tool does most of the work for you, this is a really good video for beginners. Now the trickier bit with this is that branch there. So just to kind of, yeah, try and smooth that out a little bit. If you're a bit scared of using the wire tool, you could use the, um, the floristry knife and just kind of chip away. Get this if you felt a bit more confident using a knife.
Now, though you could use a knife for the whole piece, it would take you quite a while um, to get this to this kind of point. So again, I would advise using a wire cutter. Then the nice thing about the handheld wire cutters as compared to the tabletop is that you've got a bit more control, um, particularly when kind of creating a more organic feel. So when you're creating rock faces or a tree in this instance, um, you've got a bit more control to it. Obviously a, a tabletop version is much easier to use for just kind of cutting the initial blocks. And particularly if you want to control the thickness of the piece of styrofoam, then definitely a tabletop wire cutter would be better. Um, but I think the handheld works really well here. So this time I've moved to the longer version of the rod tool just to, yeah, do this a little bit quicker really. And it's exactly the same as before. I'm just moving that tool around very quickly, creating these kind of lines up and down the piece. And obviously you do want the lines to kind of flow in the direction of the tree. You don't want to be moving these lines in different directions. Um, they don't have to be uniform, but at the same time, um, you don't want lines going in diagonals and all of that really. You want them all kind of going quite vertical against the tree. And then when you get to the branch, you could add some detail around the edge of the branch because you do get that sometimes um, where the branch kind of comes off from the, the tree trunk itself. So I'm using the rod here just to kind of hollow out the tree. Um, and again, it's just to add a bit more realism to it, really. Because if you've ever seen like a fallen log in a forest or a wood, you often see that it's hollow and, you know, insects have kind of eaten it and, you know, all sorts of things are kind of living around in it. So we just want to make it look a little bit more kind of realistic, really. And again, the great thing about this is you don't need to be really neat with this cut. And you could go as deep as you want to. Obviously, do make sure that you don't push the rod through the edge of the tree. So just be careful with what you're doing. And I'm going to do exactly the same again, but from the other side as well. So nice and slow. You can see how easily that cuts through the styrofoam. So it's worth just going in a little way first and then kind of going a little bit deeper. And do notice you get almost like a bleed effect because the tool is so hot as it starts to melt that styrofoam, you can see um, how wide that kind of cut is. So you do need to allow for that. So even though the rod itself is quite thin, you do need to allow for that kind of bleed. So I've just switched that off to obviously put it back onto the surface so it doesn't melt the plastic tray that I've got there. And I'm just kind of twisting a little bit of styrofoam to pull that out. And I'm just going to kind of smooth that down a bit as well, just to make it a bit neater. And then I'm just pushing the rod into the branch there again to hollow that out. And don't be afraid if it's not very neat because again, it wouldn't be you would see kind of cracks in the tree and you would see, you know, um, the branch would start to decay and things like that. So don't, don't worry too much about that. So I've purposely added these kind of details in there. And now just to add the same kind of texture on the inside. So I'm just moving the tool around the edge of the part we've just removed. And you can see that looks pretty effective, you know. Um, and here it is on the shelf. And for a pretty kind of speedy make, I think that looks pretty cool. I think that it does, it does the effect that I want. And looks great with these figures. So again, have a play around with that. And add as much as you want. You, can, you could add more trees if you wanted to. It's completely up to you. So what it needs next is, of course, um, some paintwork. 
Um, again, you know, I use acrylic paints um, for pretty much all of my dioramas. And I just tend to use a brush. You could use an airbrush. You could go to that length if you want to. So if you own an airbrush already, I'm sure you could get some nice gradations and some really good effects. But if you're a bit of a novice with this and you want a, a cheaper way of painting these dioramas, just a cheap brush and some paints would do the job. And as I've said many, many times before, you don't need to pay expensive for the brushes. I have got proper watercolour brush there. As you can see, the flat brush, um, but the round brushes are just cheap brushes, um, which you can pick up from any kind of art or hobby shop. Um, I find soft brushes are quite nice for the dry brush effect. And it is worthwhile just, yeah, looking up some images on your phone from Google just to get an idea of the colour scheme. Because you do often find that the, the bark itself is quite grey. So, of course, it's got a bit of brown in there. It has a bit of green in there. Um, but it tends to be quite grey. Whereas the the rings of the, the tree, as, as it's been kind of chopped down, is quite like a warm colour. So, I'm just using a dark brown. Um, yeah, you could use a burnt sienna, a warm, a warm umber. Um, but, yeah. Generally, a dark brain would do the job. Mix it with a little bit of black, just to darken it a little bit more. Um, and actually, a little bit of white in there as well, just kind of tones it down a little bit. So you just want to kind of water that down a touch and just brush that all over. And just kind of let that soak in. You do tend to find that your first coat, because it soaks into the styrofoam, it does stay wet for quite a while. So even though acrylic generally dries pretty quick, um, I have noticed that it does stay quite wet on styrofoam. So I tend to do my first coat, kind of a, a prime coat, and then let it dry for a little bit. Um, for the benefit of this video though, I haven't really had time to let that dry. So I'm just adding um, a dry brush effect over the top. And so now I'm just adding a little bit of detail to the top of the tree there. And I'm using a, again, the burnt sienna is the kind of reddish colour and the yellow ochre is the more kind of golden brown colour. A little bit of white to that as well, just around the edge, just to blend it in. Again, do look at the source material and it's really up to you what you want to use. As long as it's got a warm kind of effect to it, it, it should work. So I'm just going back to the original colour just to blend that back in a little bit more. So I'm just using a bit more of that burnt sienna to add a little bit more of a, um, a reddish touch to the top there. I'm just blending that, blending the edges back in. And of course, I'm leaving that kind of um, the bark around the edge so that kind of dark brown colour and I'm using that same kind of warm tones on the inside of the log as well and so I've added a little bit of green as well there to the main tree trunk as you can see just to finish that off and some lighter tones on the very edge um, of the bark just to really pull out that texture a little bit more so yeah it's nice to be back with you with another make i hope you've enjoyed watching this one i hope this has inspired you to have a go yourself um keep commenting keep subscribing and um, i will see you again soon